Okay, question number one. Anybody have questions over that? Two? What do we use to determine whether these are functions? Hallie? Vertical line, Vertical line tests. All right. Three. Four. Okay, on number four, um, we are trying to solve for what there? J, okay. And I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite it so we can see it a little bit easier. J over 15 minus 4 fifths is equal to 4 fifths. Okay, there's two ways that we can do this. We're going to talk about both of them. Okay, so the first way is just to simply solve for j. So we treat it like we treat any other equation. We're trying to get j by itself, right? So if we're trying to get j by itself, what do I need to move first? How do I move it? Okay, so I'm going to add 4 fifths to both sides, which allows those to eliminate. So I have j over 15 equals 8 fifths. We don't change denominators whenever we add. Okay, just add the numerators. Um, at this point, you can solve this one of two ways. You can either see that it's a proportion and do the cross product, or what else can I do? Both multiply by 15 on both sides. So when I do that, these cancel, leaving me with j equals. 5 goes into 5 once, into 15 3 times, so j is equal to 24. Okay, the other option is to um, clear the fraction. And the way that we clear the fraction is by getting a common denominator first. Okay, so for the common denominator, what would I need to multiply both of these by? Multiply it by 15. Multiply it by 3 to get 15, right? So 3 over 3, so I'm multiplying by 1. So j over 15 doesn't change. Minus, what does this become? 12 fifteenths equals 12 fifteenths. Now, what we do whenever we clear the fraction is if we have a common denominator, which here we do, and there is not a variable in the denominator, you can eliminate the denominator altogether, which gives you j minus 12 equals 12. So at this point I could just add 12 to both sides, so j is equal to 24. Both of those are the same thing, okay? Domain and range. You may have questions over uh, number five. Okay, on number five, first question I have for you. What is domain? X. And what is range? Y. So Y is here. Um, in this, what's my Y? Two. Two for the ordered pair that they give me. So X, and that would mean that negative five is my Y, right? So the point that they give me here is the vertex of this parabola, and that's kind of the starting point for this graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to determine the domain and range based on what happens from this point. So for x, okay, my negative 5, is x up and down or left and right? Up and down or left, left and right. So my question to you is, does this graph from negative 5 move in the direction, into the right direction? Okay, does it move from negative 5 in the left direction? Yes. Okay, so if it's going in both directions, what does that mean about our domain of this function? All real numbers. So x, all, spot, stop, what the heck? <laughs> all reals. 
Okay, my range again starts at this two or whatever point they say for it to start at, which in this case is two. Why is it not working here? Come on. I've apparently worked my computer too hard today. Okay, so from two, y goes up or down? Up and down, excuse me. From here, does it go up or down? It goes up, right? It doesn't go down because there's nothing below two. Does everybody see that? There's no function graph down here. Okay, so for y, what is my range? Whoops, greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to, two. Because it goes above two, it could be equal to two because it's at that point. Everybody with me on that? All right, number six, any questions on six? Six, okay, so a store is selling a couch for $855. on a 24 month payment plan and there's a down payment of $163 given no interest is charged how much will the customer have to pay each month round your answer to the nearest cent okay so I need to set up an equation for this what would that equation be Riley what do you got Okay, that's not an equation. That's a how do you solve the equation. Let's write an equation. I know the total of the couch is $855. And that has to be equal to what they pay, right? So what do they pay? $163 down payment, but what else do they pay? They pay something for 24 months, right? Everybody understand where I got that from? Okay, now we're going to do what Riley said and solve that. So the first step is to subtract six, 163 from both sides. Um, I want to make sure that you understand that whenever, say on a test, it says write an equation, they want to see the equation in this form. Is everybody with me on that? Okay, so when I subtract these, what do I get? Equals... 24M, now what? 24 on both sides. So what is M equal to? Say it again for me. 83 cents. Okay, if you're talking about money and you're entering it on a test, dollar sign, decimal point. Anybody have a question on 7? 8? Eight. Okay, so I'm solving for y on 8, so y is right here. So if I'm solving for y, my goal is to what? Get y by itself. So I have this equal sign right here. I want y to be by itself and everything else on the other side. So what should I do? Subtract 2 from both sides, okay? So if I do that, I have 3.8y plus 4 sevenths x equals negative 2. Now what? Add 4 sevenths. Subtract it. It's being, it's being added. i got to do the opposite. So subtract 4 sevenths x. Is it going to be like terms with this negative 2? No. So I'm going to offset it a little bit to remind me I'm not putting them together. So those eliminate. I have 3.8y equals, what do I want to write over here? Negative 2, Okay, I want to put the x term first just because um, I want it to be in descending exponential order. We're going to start um, having to graph things like this where we want the x to come first so we'll be able to identify our slope easier. So I want x first, then my constant. Now what? 3.8 on both sides. So when I do that, I get y equals, and I have to divide 3.8 into every term on this side. 
So I'm going to use parentheses, and I'm going to punch this into my calculator. Negative 4 sevenths divided by 3.8. It's going to give me some ugly decimal. And whenever I get that ugly decimal, I'm going to change it to a fraction because I'm not going to write out some huge decimal as part of my answer, right? So what do I get when I change it to a fraction? Calculators, I should hear click, click, click. Let's go. What do we get? Parentheses, negative four sevenths, close parentheses, divided by 3.8. What do we get? No, nope, change it to a fraction. You're not going to write all that down. Negative 20 over 133 x. Negative 2 divided by 3.8 gives me? Fraction? Negative 10 over 19. This is my final answer. Okay. Questions over number 9. Number 10. Okay, even though you don't have any questions on number 10, I want you to recognize this function notation. Okay? F of D. That is function notation. You do not write Y equals 40 minus 4D, which is the answer, okay? Um, you need to have okay, you need to have F of D. If I ask you to type something in, hint, 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 if I ask you to type something in in function notation, it has to be F of whatever that variable is. So F, parenthesis, variable, close it up, equals the equation. Questions on 11? Nobody? 12? 12, okay. So on 12, I want to know, it says how many solutions are there. Okay, that's what it wants to know. So I have Y here, I have Y here, I have Y here. So my goal when I have an equation is generally to solve for the variable, right? So the same rule applies here. I'm going to solve for the variable. So what should I do first? Combine like terms on each side. So on the left, what can I combine? And when I put negative 4 plus 6y, what do I get? 2y, bring down my plus 3, equals, what do I have over here? 8 and positive 5. When I put them together, I get 13 plus 2y. Now what can I do? Subtract 2y from both sides. So when I do that, they both cancel. So what am I left with? And that's not true, right? So if it's not true, what does that mean? No solution. Okay, what other options were there? would there be for telling how many solutions there are? We have no solution. What else do we have? Riley? Okay, that is the same thing as no solution. Infinite. Infinite solutions. And one more option. One solution. Okay, when you get a little older, you might have two solutions if you're doing radicals. Okay, but right now we have no solution, infinite solutions, or one solution. So, for example, let's say that I had um, 5x equals 15. What would you do at this point? on both sides, so x equals 3. So if the question said, tell how many solutions, x equals 3 is not the answer. How many solutions are there? One. One. x equals 3, that is the solution. Okay, what if I have...
What would you do here? Subtract 4x from both sides. Those eliminate, so I get 10 equals 10. Is that true? What's that mean? That means infinite solutions. You need to know. Okay? You need to know the difference. If it's not true, no solution or empty set. If it is true, you come up with a constant equals a constant or maybe x equals x, that is infinite solutions. If you come up with your variable equal to a constant, that is the solution. So 1. Okay. Uh, 13. Questions on 13? Anybody? No? Yeah? Okay, so on 13 says an amusement park has two types of season passes. Plan 1, what does plan 1 charge? $150 one time plus 9x because it's 9 for each trip. Plan 2, $60 for their one time fee plus 15x because it's 15 for each trip. For what number of trips, number of trips here, is that P or X? X? X. Is the cost of these plans the same? What does the same mean? Equal. So I'm going to say 150 plus 9X equals 60 plus 15X. And I'm going to let you solve it from there. Okay. Fourteen, going once, going twice, fifteen, fifteen, no, S did I skip one? I don't have sixteen on here apparently, oh I bet it's behind those, nope, I don't know where sixteen is, so seventeen, it was sixteen, somebody had a question on sixteen, you did? Um, well I don't have it pulled up anymore, let's see. Sixteen. This is a good question. Victoria earns 1.5 times her normal pay. <clears throat> her normal hourly pay for each hour she works over 40 hours in a week. Her normal pay is 770 per hour. Last week she earned six or excuse me three hundred sixty five dollars seventy five cents. How many hours did she earn last week? So first of all, you know that she earns seven seventy for the first forty hours, right? Okay, plus one point five times her normal pay for each hour over forty hours is equal to what she got paid last week. So if she didn't work any overtime, H would be zero, right? But they want to know how many total hours, so after you find H, don't forget she's already worked 40 hours. Okay? Have a good day. Okay, so if I take 1.5 times 770, this is how much she gets paid for each hour of overtime. So I'm not just taking these two times each other, I'm also taking them times her overtime hours. Everybody with me on that? But that has to be added to what she makes in a normal week. A normal work week is how many hours? 40. So how much would she make in 40 in a 40 hour work week? How would I figure that out? 770 times 40 equals so her normal work week plus her overtime hours equals how much she got paid, right? 365.75. Now, if she didn't work any overtime hours, she has a zero here. 
that would mean that when we multiply these, it would just be equal to this amount, right? So this would work for no matter how many hours she worked, um, whether she had overtime or not. Okay, so what would you do now? Gives me? Oh my gosh, I have to do work stuff. Say it again. 308 equals 365.75 plus, plus, what's this? Yes. What is it? 11.55? Okay, so now what would you do? 308 from both sides. So I have 1155H equals, what's this give me? 5775. 5775. Now what? Why? 1155. So what does that give me? H equals. Sorry, interruption. Just a brief announcement for all juniors and seniors. The Mizzou rep will be in the library during aware time. If you are interested in visiting with the Mizzou rep, please make sure that you go ahead and go to your aware hour, get your teacher's permission, and then you will be able to visit with them in the library. Thank you. Okay, so is five hours how many hours she worked last week? No. Why? Why is five hours not the number of hours that she worked last week? Her average isn't 40. That's her overtime hours. She already worked her regular work week, which was 40 plus her five hours overtime. So how much did she work? 45 hours total. Okay. What do you need, Leslie? Can you send me the senior template thing? All right. So first one up is 17. Excuse me, 17. Do we have... Any questions on 17? Anybody want to see that one? 18? Nobody wants to see it? Yeah. Yeah? So if I'm trying to solve for Z, Z is right here. That means I'm going to get Z by itself. So what's with Z right now? J. J. So how do I get J away from Z? Yeah. Divide by yeah. on both sides. Okay. So whenever I do that, my J's will cancel out, leaving me with Z is equal to what? M, not MJ, M over J. Okay. So if you have to type this in, if I give you something like this and I say uh, to type it in, I would want to see Z equals M and then the slash J. Okay. No spaces. All right. Number 19. Anybody want to see 19? No, we're all good on that. Okay, 20. 20 says the area of a triangle is given by, and they give you the formula. Solve for B. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is get B by itself in this formula. So I have A equals one half b h. So if I want to get b by itself, what should I move first? I want to leave b. I want to get it by itself. Yeah. One half. How can I move a half? Multiply by its reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by two over, two over one on both sides. So when I do that, that eliminates. So now over here I just have two a equals bh. I still want to get b by itself, so what should I do? Divide by, Divide by h on both sides. Okay, so b is equal to 2a over h. Wants me to find the base length, which would be b, if the triangle has an area of 34 square inches and a height of 13 inches. So all I'm going to do with that information is what? I'm going to plug it in right here. So I want to find B. 
equals 2 times what's A? 34. Over what is B? 13. So what do I get? Yeah, I get 68. So approximately 5.2 inches. Okay. 21. Anybody want to see 21? No? Okay. 22. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Yeah. yeah. The state highway patrol is measuring traffic at three exit ramps. All three exit ramps lead to a stop sign where the driver must turn right or left. The table shows the statistics for each of the exit ramps. Make a double bar graph of the exit or of the data. Okay, so we have left turn and right turn, which they're saying, okay. So we have exits one, two, and three. So on exit one, the left turn, which they say is this speckled bar, okay, left they're saying is speckled, and right they're saying is solid. So right away is left larger than right if I'm comparing these two because the speckled bar is taller than the solid bar so that means the left turn has to be more than the right turn do you agree that the left turn is more than the right turn 40 is more than 58 see what I'm saying the bar the left bar is taller and the left bar is a smaller number so that can't be it because of that. You see what I'm saying? You have to be really careful when you're looking at graphs because they've swapped these two. This is the only one where the left bar is the speckled bar. Do you see that? Here's right, here it's right, here it's right. Okay, so they're trying to trick you. Okay, so then I, looking at the next one, left turn, so that's down here, left turn they have at 40 which this is oh man this is hard to see is what it is this is 25 and 50 right so 40 is about two below so they have 40 is here that looks pretty good then they have the next ones at 58 which would be about there so that looks pretty good on exit 2 they have 46 and 79 so 46 would be about here that looks pretty good 79 also looks pretty good and then here they have 74 and 54 which looks pretty good um all of the others they look these look exactly the same don't they oh they don't okay here's what's different this is I think this is a, a different number yeah this is 5 10 and 15 this is also 5, 10, and 15. So these two are wrong because the scale is nowhere near what it needs to be. So the bars look exactly the same on these three. But, well, they actually look exactly the same on all of them. This one, they're labeled wrong. These two, the scale is wrong. So your answer is B. Questions on 25? No. Okay. So how about 17, or 16, excuse me. 16? Anybody? Anybody? Everybody knows how to do number 16? I can give you a quiz over it right now. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. You, you can do it? Oh, you want to go over it? Where's all your stuff? Why is it packed up? You have seven minutes. You're not done, dude. Okay, so it says Victoria earns 1.5 times her normal hourly pay. For each hour, she works over 40 hours in a week. 
Her normal pay is seven seventy per hour, and last week she earned three sixty five seventy five. How many hours did she work last week? So, what would you do to start this thing out? 